Hi, in this video we're going to look at creating and applying a logo to a headstock of a Fender Telecaster. In this case it's a black Mexican made Telecaster that came with a maple neck um, fretboard. But I want a rosewood fretboard. And because I'm left handed, Fender don't make them. So I've got myself uh, a non-genuine Telecaster neck with a rosewood fretboard and this one comes with an extra fret so I can hit higher notes. Um, it's very well made and I want to change, well, I want to put a logo on there but I want it to be different to the stock logo. And the one I'm looking at uh, is inspired by one of my guitar heroes Brian May from Queen. Now he's always famous for playing his Red Special handmade guitar but for a crazy little thing called Love, he actually played a Telecaster, a black one with a rosewood fretboard, and I think it was from the late 70s, 77, 78. He also played it at Live Aid, as can be seen here. Um, and in order to recreate the look of that guitar, got to start off with some decal paper. Now you can buy this online, uh, I'm going for clear decal paper and that is the logo I want to recreate so I like the big bold Telecaster text. So using some software I've got a font and I've done the logo. Um, I mean it's not going to be identical to that picture but um, you know I've made it, tried to make it look kind of genuine when you're printing it you always want to set for this decal paper set it to glossy best quality because you want a lot of ink to go down on this paper so, so you get a real black bold text i print more than one logo out because uh, things can go wrong um, and what you've got to do is you need to seal that ink onto the paper. If you just put that paper in water, it's just gonna come off. So this is the, the kind of steps you go through. This is what we want to achieve. So imagine that's a cross section. So you've got the logo and I want to spray three to four layers of lacquer on there. You know, just clear um, spray paint that will seal the ink onto the decal paper. So then when you put the decal onto the new headstock, you'll get the decal with three to four layers of the lacquer on there. And what you want to achieve, here we go here, is then once the decal's on there, you will then lacquer again over the headstock and the decal. So you'll end up with at least eight layers. And what you'll do is you'll sand down you'll see later in the process that it'll be kind of raised. So you'll sand down the top layers of the lacquer um, so that eventually you'll end up with one smooth layer and you won't be able to tell that that's a decal. It'll just look like it's printed onto the wood. Now it is a long process, but the more time you spend on each step, the better results you'll have in the end. Um, you don't want to rush any of this. But what I've got here is the decal sheet. I've sprayed it with at least four coats of lacquer, allowing it to dry between each coat. And you just want to make sure that that ink is going to be completely sealed. And select a, a logo that looks good. Cut round it. You want to cut as close to the printed material as you can, leaving as thin an outline, as thin an edge as you can around the actual logos. Now I was going to apply this logo in one decal, but I decided to cut it in half, so I did the Telecaster and then the Fender separately. I just thought it would give me more maneuverability. So here goes the first one. 
leave it into lukewarm water for about 10 to 15 seconds just until it comes free of the backing paper and slide the backing paper away and already you can see that it's going to look good now the thing with the Telecaster is the Telecaster logo follows the line of the strings so it's straight fairly horizontal whereas a Stratocaster the logo follows the lower edge of the headstock normally um, I'll put the Fender logo on and if these stay fairly wet you can move them around the wood uh, to finalise the position before mopping up any excess water you can just see try and get it as straight as I can I think I'll use a little bit of cardboard here just to make sure they're fairly straight the thing is if you spend the time making sure this is good it can save you a lot of pain later on because <laughs> if you've uh, committed to the position and it's not correct you've got to strip it off and start again so then I'll go over with some paper towel just mop up any excess moisture make sure it's, the logos aren't going to slide around again um, and make sure there's no crinkles or anything and as you can see there that looks pretty good could almost get away with it but that's not good enough we want better results so I'd probably allow it to dry naturally over the course of a couple of hours and then here this is where I start lacquering it and you start off with a really light coat and I start off with matte lacquer leave that for half an hour come back this is after about four or five coats so you can see that it looks nicely sealed nice the edges are nice and smooth and then you want some wet and dry paper some fine wet and dry paper so go for a 2000 grit and then this is what takes the time but you've got to be careful here because you can easily go too far sand off more lacquer than you want and then you're into the decal and you can ruin the decal and you've got to start again as I say it's just a long process and you've got to be patient but I've got a light shining on the headstock there so you can you know you can see your progress you've just got to take minimal amounts of the lacquer off keep checking obviously I've sped this footage up because you know I'm <laughs> sanding away for ages but uh, it's getting better and better it's almost like magic you can all of a sudden you'll see that oh you know it really looks as though it's been printed on the wood it, it looks factory finish there. now those marks you can see aren't too concerning you could probably get away with that so here I'm just running my finger over to you know and it just feels like the wood you cannot feel that there's a, a layer of decal on now here I think I've sprayed a coat of matte lacquer and to be honest that is a lovely finish um, a lot of the modern era fenders you know will just be finished with a, a satin or a matte finish you know and that looks factory you cannot see the outline of the decal at all and I'm happy with that but for this era of Telecaster had a nice glossy finish so uh, over that matte lacquer I give it a few coats of polyurethane gloss lacquer and let it dry and that looks you know that'll give me a real good authentic finish now I've replicated the serial number of the the guitar here so again I just go through the same process obviously it's not quite as important uh, as the actual front of the headstock but 
I wanted to make it look like a factory finished guitar. Once that's done, back to the front of the headstock and because of the amount of lacquer I've sprayed on the headstock, the uh, holes for the tuning machines or the machine heads will get a bit gunked up with excess layers of lacquer so I'm just going here and sanding away any excess before I fit the machine heads. It's very satisfying when you get to this stage because it starts looking like a proper factory finished guitar. So that's all the machine heads. Now I've just got to add the finishing touch which is a more modern style of uh, string guide. Just put that on. Get the fiddly little screw, make sure I don't over tighten it. And, uh, look at my skills with these tools, so fast. There we go, and there we have it my 1970s era Brian May replica Fender Telecaster. Now if you've enjoyed watching this video and found it useful or even if you just found it interesting please subscribe to my channel and give me a like. I hope to be posting more content of various little projects I get myself involved in not necessarily guitar related. Anyway thanks for watching.